I am joined by Corey McKenna. She is going to Cage Warriors 104. Now, don't giggle. You're facing Fanny Redman. Don't. I wasn't going to giggle until you said it. You totally okay. were, right? Everyone else listening, be professional, okay? And we're going to be professional the whole time we say this, all right? So, are you looking to come back with a big bang against Fanny? Yeah, I mean, obviously, got some stuff to prove. I've, I've made a lot of improvements in myself. I, that last fight, you know, I uh, didn't, didn't perform. Completely don't think did myself justice there anyway in relation to where I was technically. So, with the improvements that I've made on top of that, I think, you know, I'll, I'll really be able to come back and make a statement and show everyone what I'm capable of. Did you get a lot from that, though, the last fight? Because it was a split decision, so it's not like it was like a 30-26, you know, it wasn't like, it was It was a war. I'm going to put it this, it was, that was a tough one, like you had to dig deep, you must have got a lot out of it from that side of things, going, actually, uh, I'm good for this. It's one of those difficult ones, like, you can take something away from every fight, like, everyone always does the old win or learn, like, mm. you don't have to lose fights to learn, like, and, and I do, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a sore loser, but I do hate losing, so. Yeah. I think that's kind of, you know, anyone who thinks it's got, like, they're happy with losing it, it's a strange mentality anyway. But, yes, I could take a lot away from it, like, say, from a technical aspect, from everything, like, like the coach say, yes, showed heart, kind of, um, you know, I'll, I'll never quit in a fight, that's for sure. Uh, it was a frustrating one for me, because, like, I'd rather lose more decisive. I don't sound stupid, but if I'm going to lose a fight, I'd like to lose decisively, and I, mm. I couldn't me really get my head around it as much as I thought it was a terrible fight I also thought I did enough to win it and as seemed to be the um you know general consensus amongst everyone else so it was a frustrating one and yeah I took a lot away from it in terms of you know my game mm. uh knowing how like I'm not be funny like everyone always says I've never experienced a loss before so you know, and I think the fact that I just bounced straight back within the gym the next day, I think that speaks for itself. You know, I'm I'm not win or lose. You know, I'm I'm always going to be striving in that direction, always working to prove myself, and I'll just come back and show everyone in the next fight. And did you have your coaches in Wales and America both talk to you about the fight and about where you did they both both show different areas to improve on? Did they kind or did were they both on the same hymn sheet? Yeah, I mean, the, the great thing between the gyms, like I say, I, I still work with Jack from Colchester. Mm. I, I've got Richard and that in Wales. And like I say, Uriah and everyone out here. Um, the great thing is, in terms of coaching techniques and opinions, they're all very similar. And I think that's great because like, I surround myself with so many people with the same mentality, the same sort of outlook on things. So it's mm. great that they don't really clash or collide. So, you know, they've all watched the fights. They've all given me the same feedback and they're all, all working with me and game planning with me towards, you know, towards the next one. So, um, yeah, everyone has given it a watch, and they've all, like I say, given me some constructive criticism. No, that's good, that's good. Uh, now, I've got to say, I did notice, is this vegan protein or something new? What's this, what's this, what's this supplement you're doing vegan protein? What's, all, what's going on here? Yeah, I work with um, q and T. I I am I'm not a vegan, but I don't do, I don't do dairy. I add, like, a testing and it said lactose intolerant or whatever so I just uh I don't do dairy leading up to a fight but um the QNC products are amazing uh shout out to them you do get a little discount code if you uh check my Instagram out not yeah. 10% off but like seriously I've been working with them for like years that their their products are top notch and really helped me out in fight camp so yeah I've oh. been working with them they got no. a new flavor which I'm looking forward to trying did you find out about the lactose thing? Like, is this something you found out recently and that's maybe what's made a difference in your nutrition and the kind of way you feel in training? No, no, this was before, like, my pro debut. I've been I've been on that stuff for, like, a year now. Um, and like you say, I get everything I need out of it. It's great. Oh, right, awesome. No worries. Yeah, I, I, well, obviously, I've never done tests like myself and I just... I'm, I'm sure I'm fine. I'll be grand, you know. <laughs> I, love a, I love a dash of milk and my tea. I'm never taking that out. Now, is that something that you miss a, a cup of tea, you know, over in the States? Do they have proper tea over there or? Uh, so this is actually a bit of a joke. Um, everyone laughs because I drink a lot of tea. Uh, <laughs> so I I actually brought four boxes of tea with me. Um, 
green tea because I, I like to drink it in my yeah. water. I drink so much water, so I'll be training and I'll be the one sat there with a lemon green tea. Um, so it's yeah, I'm I, I'm, a, I'm a walking British stereotype, really. I like my mint tea. I've got to admit, I love mint tea. Lemon, they're, they're, they're for me. Yeah, it's a winner, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, nothing wrong. So, I was gonna say because you're not at Team Alpha Male now. It's not called that, isn't it? It's something like Team Non-Binary or something. The way they blink and nor. I know, I know. What, what is it now? What's he calling it now, Uriah? Uh, they've rebranded as Team Alpha MMA. I think they said they've gone with. That was it. There you go. There you go. Just in case. Just in case anyone wants to get offended. Yeah, because that's the sort of thing that would really bother some people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, not with all this PC kind of millennial stuff, but, you know, whatever they've got to do. Just bang your head on a wall, don't you? Oh, just... <laughs> the, the weak times make weak people. That is the best way to put it. You got nothing better to do. Um, so, how is it going over there? Because obviously, I just you just done the uh, cryo, and obviously, the Ameri- obviously being in California, they're not used to cold weather. But you must have said, look, if you ever come over to Wales and England, this is just a sat. This is just a normal weekend. This this is normal weather. It, it just felt like getting in my car in the morning. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, my first time trying it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I I, I feel good. Um, it's, it's quite cool to have access to stuff like that. Like, they work with the gym, so you get a bit of a discount and everything. Mm. So that's kind of useful to have. Uh, kind of wish I tried it a bit sooner. <laughs> but, yeah, I had, I had great fun. Um, definitely made it a lot easier. I was a bit, a bit nervous leading up to it. I was like, oh, it's going to be freezing. But uh, now I was, I was just in there laughing at the other girl, so uh, that's all right. Did, um, do you have to start like in the thing. box? Because you're, you're, you're short. You're petite. You're petite. That's the word I want to use. And I know it's quite a high level. You men have your head out, aren't you? So do you have to have a box by any chance? It was actually a room, so like in the same way that you have like corner yeah. room, it, it was like that, but like obviously breathing. Oh right, okay. So because the ones I've seen, it, it's like a like a tube, like a pipe. Yeah, people like, go in the door, yeah. Yeah, I think they do different ones. Like different locations have different um, different types, but yeah, we went in like one cold room and then you move on to the next, which is freezing. <laughs> like our, our eyelashes were like frosty and everything. It was great. <laughs> It's like it's like a level. Each level you go up, see how hardcore you can go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Stood there like don't wimp out. Yeah, go on, like, look, British, you know what I mean? We got this. This is nothing. Come on, bring it on. You you and your sunshine every day, California. How dare you? That's it. We come we come outside and we were just like, Oh, it's really hot now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so how, how is the uh, how is the facilities there? Because I know uh, when I look at it, you've got the big crowds there, the big the big groups you train. But you said before uh, you get quite a good one on one with the coaching and stuff like that. Uh, what's that kind of you know for you experience wise? What kind of stuff do you get from that with that kind of one on one attention? Yeah, I mean, like say they've got, they've got the highest level coaches on the mats, and I, like I said, I don't think the coaching itself is that different. Um, to backgrounds like like the people that I work with, like say, cause I always you know try to work with the highest level of people. Mm. But there's there's you see the pro sessions. Yes, there might be like thirty people on the mats, but they'll also have you know six, seven coaches. So everyone kind of gets that small group sort of look, and then they have extra sessions like um so like they have practice before practice, which is like technical and the, like the coach to student ratio is pretty much one on one. Um, I'm very fortunate that like your eyes has put a lot of time in with me, so like if he's, if he's got some time free, he'll he'll do me a pad session or some grappling technique, or he's been working like actually partnering up with me in class quite a lot just to be my training partner, um, which again is obviously amazing. Um, we we were sparring, well, we got a few rounds in boxing yesterday, and then um, MMA um, did a ten minute round with him. That was that wasn't as fun as the. <laughs> but uh, but no, I'm I'm getting like literally the highest work I, level work I could get, and uh, you know I, I really do think it's going to pay off. So, and with regards to your opponent, uh, have you done any research on or you or has even like you know Team Alpha non-binary done anything on it or? Uh, there's not really too much, but I know she's a like uh, I think she's black belt judo, high level like 
brown or black jiu-jitsu but there's not really any footage on her or anything so I'm just kind of going in there with my old just kind of do my thing and play it by yeah. ear I'm uncomfortable wherever it goes to be honest I've been yeah. like there's there's black belt judokas here that I've been working with I've been working with obviously I mean it's America obviously I've been working with high level wrestlers yeah um, there's you know one of the girls I've been sparring with Ukraine world champ or something like that so you know tie boxing and so I've got a look of everything I got to working with the uh, US Olympic boxing girl who's also WBC champ um, I, I, you name it I've done it I, I'm, I'm making sure I've covered all bases so yeah I, I wherever it goes I don't really see me getting too uh, too stressed out about it so I've not done too much research now with it being a judoka then do you think that I think one bit of tape study is the one Holly Holm Ronda Rousey because obviously with a judoka she'll want to get those hips in and Holly did the most beautiful game plan with keeping the hips away to stop that hip toss I, I think that's just like your kind of blueprint there for facing a judoka especially in MMA the first round is the key because that's when you're, you're a bit drier the second round a bit more sweat comes in I've always said judo doesn't quite transition to the later rounds because you're starting to get a bit sweaty. Those hip tosses and hit, you, you're slipping out a bit more there. Uh, I'll one up you. I, I um, I like I like how you said that, but I, I always just say judo doesn't really transfer to MMA, and uh, which obviously makes it quite competitive on the mats with the judo boys. But uh, <laughs> um, no, I'm not like you said, like you say. As long as your hip, like I think it's all through the hips and everything. Yeah. Uh, don't want to give too much away, of course. No, 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 but, no. But no, no. no I, I, it's not that I don't respect the judo, but I also think, um, you know, with the wrestling and everything, it does make it quite easy to counter. Um, funny enough, your eyes said something the first day, which uh, I'll, I'll quote it, even though it's probably not going to go down too well. <laughs> said, uh, he said, a, a, a judo black belt is a wrestling purple belt at best. So, yeah. uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when we... I, I, I agree with him because we, uh, at our gym, uh, we've got a couple of judo clubs around, so we get them to come down and show us some techniques, and I just look at him going, yeah, I just take his leg, yeah, I just double leg, mm, yeah, I just get him down the ground, and then whenever we, grab, we do like go, we do grapple, we'll have a little grapple session standing on the feet, and I'm like, I'm just going to go for a low single, mate, and because you don't attack legs in judo, so I'm like, they're all mine. It is like it is a legitimate sport, and it is tough. Yeah. Like I did some work with it, and like you, you stick the gi on, and honestly, yes. like they'll chuck you about for days, and oh, yeah. that's it. Just it's, it's just a different sport, you know what I mean? Like some mm-hmm. some things just don't transfer so well. Like you haven't got those grips and everything, so it does make it harder. Yeah. I'm not saying it's, like, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I mean I, I'm quite stubborn in my mentality. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like. You know, it, it is a different sport, so the transfer aspect of it is, is a bit more difficult, I think, with judo than it is with, say, like the wrestling and everything because of the, you know, the use of the game. Yeah, the, the, it, it narrows down the amount of kind of options you have with the judo to transfer over, as opposed to the wrestling. Pretty much all of the wrestling can transfer over because, like you said, you're not grabbing the singlet in wrestling, you, you know, you're, you're physically grabbing. The, the opponent so it, it's it's a different kind of realm and uh, obviously I think the gi gives more friction as well so I think there's a bit more to it for them as well with that side of things and obviously uh, they don't get that with the MMA uh, but let's so so you, let's look at the, the Cage Warriors event now because they've got an absolutely pretty stellar card going on 104 but then down in June have you seen that card so far the, so far they're in, yeah they're now six title fights which is mental, and um, like Cage Warriors are just stacking up, stacking up. But they're making quite a good effort with the whole title, bat, title fights, etc. You know, you want to get yourself back to winning ways, and you want to pretty much put your mark on Cage Warriors this year. I imagine you, you know, that's you, you want to. Have, I, do you want to have like? Have you got a goal of two or three or four fights this year? You want to try and? I know it's a slow start now, but are you want to just get going now that they've got this match lined up? Uh, I'd like. I'd like. You know, three or four. I mean, I did try. I did want on to maybe like an earlier fight, but just because the way things worked and the way the Cage Warriors cards were lined up, uh, this show was, um, you know, the, the the first one I could get on. Yeah. So gonna play it by ear, but I want at least three fights, and uh, as you say, 
but I'll, you know, make, make my mark by the end of the year. And are you doing, when you're over, obviously in the States, do you look at maybe doing some grappling comps when you're over there? Because obviously they've got, you know, submission only comps and all jazz over there. And they've got probably like other competitions you can do outside of MMA just to keep, you know, that kind of sharpness on? Um, not really. I mean, firstly, it's, it's ridiculously really expensive. Yeah. Definitely, I'm probably the most injury prone person you'd meet. So, ah. I, I like to focus solely on that and making sure that I'm 100% tip-top, strong, uh, in shape for that fight as opposed to putting my attention elsewhere, you know? So, you know, once I got this fight matched up throughout here, six-week camp, um, this is my sole focus. I don't want any more distractions or any more risks. Um, <laughs> yeah. So not, not really for myself, no. No, it's a smart move, mate. I wasn't sure if maybe you had, like, for example, let like say, I wasn't sure if it was a full six weeks there of camp. I wasn't sure maybe if it was you were there for a bit training and then you kick in the fight camp and you've got, uh, you know, because they've got tons of stuff going on open, Kelly. You know, there's all sorts of events going on all the time. It's just something I thought you might jump in and have a little play. It's a big place as well, mine. I don't yeah. remember people like, there's a competition and they're like, oh, it's in wherever. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, that can't be far. And then I look at the map and it's like two hours away or something. I'm like, okay. My yeah. little pedal back that. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's not like back here. You think so, yeah, it's only it's only uh, you know it's not that far away, but uh, yeah, Cali is it's massive, it's huge, yeah. huge area. Yeah. And uh, obviously, um, you'll be back home soon. I uh, have you got when when are you going to come back to the UK? Obviously, because you don't want the jet lag kicking in and stuff like that. Are you, you going to come back a week or two before? Uh, jet lag's another thing that doesn't work. Um, I'm flying back. <laughs> I'm back on the Monday, I land on the Tuesday, and then I fight on the Saturday. Okay, okay, cool, nice, nice. Uh, obviously, you'll have everything ready and prepped, all the, uh, you know, uh, shaking the boys and all that. I'll have everything ready for you when you get over here. Uh, but let's let's talk about your sponsors, uh, Corey. Give us. You mentioned your supplement sponsor. Yeah. Um, all all the everyone's getting sponsored by. I got Jamie. Who, who else was it? Uh, Aaron Khalid. Who else? Jamie Richardson. Who else? Buddy? Oh, Mason Jones. That was it. Every blinking Nora's got them sponsors on. They're the ones to be sponsored by. Uh, they, you know, the, the kit's great, so um, that, I'll be wearing their kit for my fight for sure. And what I about any, anyone else? Anyone else sponsoring you? DCL. Uh, they're an insurance company in Chelmsford. Uh, they pretty much funded my last two camps. And trust me, I'm an expensive person to fund staff my parents, so uh, <laughs> they've had to come <laughs> and what about your uh, social media? You know, you said about the discount people can get, which is on your Instagram, for the supplements if they're, you know, vegan-based or lactose intolerant, etc. It's not just that. They're, they do everything. You know, they do the whey, they do the BCA. Ah, uh, right, okay. You name it, they do it. Honestly, like, I'm so lucky to be sponsored by them, like... I put in an order and I'm just like, I, you know, they send it straight out. Great. Um, yeah, they do. They do everything. Every supplement you can want. So check that out. Corey cool. McKenna and everything to answer that question. Nice, nice. And then last but not least, mention, how about you tr try and mention all the gyms? Uh, there's quite a few people there in each gym, but, you know, if you could try and... Narrow it down to your favourites. I mean, um, the people that, you know, kind of uh, stand out, obviously, uh, Jack... Uh, obviously helping out with the management side of things, of course. Yeah, Jack, the manager, uh, Richard Shaw, the coach at Tillery, uh, uh, boxing with Gary Lockett in Wales, got my strength coach, James. Uh, everyone's been commenting on my strength for this camp. Um, so, you know, if people out here are commenting on it, then you can uh, guarantee I've made some stacked. games. Stacked. What you mean is you stack, Corey. Wedge. Edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then out here, like you say, like Uriah, um, Danny Castillo, the wrestling coach, has been great. Uh, Chris Holdsworth, the jiu-jitsu and Thai boxing, Mike Malott. Oh, there's so many. There's so many coaches. So many coaches everywhere. It's, but, I know. Uh, that's what I was thinking. You've got too many places and too many people now. <laughs> no, I've, but I've been, like I say, all the guys at Team Alpha Male Tillery and, like I say, Jack, my manager at BKK. They're all great, and all the lads that I do my like do my training and sparring with also amazing. Fantastic, hey Corey! Look, have a great fight, and uh, have a great time smashing Fanny. And uh, 
you know, enjoy Cage Warriors 104. I'm sure I will. Thank you very much.